now we have the fun part of downloading the lat and long of the whales and seeing how they migrate and where they travel to and whether they travel together or by themselves and when they get to Antarctica and when they start to feed and hopefully we'll be able to tag some more next year. It's become a really cutting edge project for science and hopefully um, to fight politics also. It's nice when we can do both at the same time. Despite the many years of hunting the whales and uh, projects trying to study the, the whales, it's never been clear exactly what are the migratory routes, what do they do while in migration, what speed do they travel. Um, it's not clear the stock boundaries because we can, for example, we don't know, for example, if the whales on the Cook Islands and the whale on the rest of the South Pacific, like New Caledonia or American Samoa, if they do they migrate to the same area in Antarctica, do they have different uh, feeding areas? If we can identify the habitat of those animals, we can use this information to mitigate some of the man-made impacts and using it for the conservation of the species. And I hope that we can learn more by the satellite tagging. I think we can. We know so little about whales. They really weren't even studied until the early 70s. So this is all new information about a species that have been on the planet for millions of years. It's just, it's fascinating. It's an honor to study them. I really hope this tagging project will contribute to our knowledge exactly what happens to the humpbacks on the way down to the southern ocean. And I feel very privileged to get so close to these amazing animals and contribute a little bit to our understanding of humpback whale migration. Around the world and also in Japan, people love whales and the beauty of the ocean. But I also know that whales face all sorts of dangers such as climate change, drift nets, and ship strikes. To have whaling on top of all these threats is the last thing whales need.